Hi, welcome to LPC Online. I'm Pastor Doug and I wanna thank you for joining us today, especially those who are watching for the first time. If you'd like to connect with us, you can go to our website, listdualpc.com and leave us a message. We really hope that God uses this time to help you grow in your faith and be encouraged. Well, good morning, LPC. How are you doing today? Uh, I haven't seen you since the new year, so happy new year. Rebecca sends her love, but as of right now, she is resting. Uh, baby has been healthy and incredibly active. Um, our sleep cycle is a little bit jazz these days, uh, so forgive me if I look a little bit tired. Um, but these are good things to celebrate. Uh, everything is going smoothly, and we just wanted to say thank you so much for your prayers, for your heartfelt messages, uh, and your moral support on this journey um, to parenthood. Um, it really does take a village to raise a child, and and we feel loved, even in this, even amidst a, a, an uncertain season, an uncertain world, we feel immensely loved. So thank you. Um, and I really wanted to encourage you this morning to hear this. Although we are distanced, we are still a community. And so if you haven't heard this yet this year, this new year, 2021, that will bring on new things, new challenges, new dreams, and a new season, know that you are not alone. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. God bless you this morning. Let's worship together.
today's world, the current state of everything, uh, it's, it's difficult to grasp things that are concrete. It's, it's easy to see a uh, polarizing divide between ideals and belief systems and politics and all of those things. But one thing remains, we are all human, and we all seek something to belong to. And I'm thankful that 
we have this community that we can we can actually be in community with each other in spite of the things that are currently happening and that try to convince us otherwise and so in this last song as uh, Rebecca leads we uh, we want to encourage you to realign yourselves with Christ really really reflect on what God is speaking to you your life and your family and how we can be Jesus to the rest of this world. Let's worship together.
Well, we're only two weeks in, and already I can say that 2021 is starting off as a very challenging year. Now, I don't know how many of you were like me, where you knew that things weren't magically going to change and go away at the, uh, the sounding of the, the gong and the, the midnight tolling in the new year, that it changed to 2021. All of our struggles and things that we were dealing with in 2020 weren't just going to go away. But somewhere secretly in the back of your mind or in your heart, you were hoping that this year would be very different. Well, that was, that was me. And it kind of came more and more to my attention when I just recognized that there's things that seem to keep coming up this year. A few days ago, our government decided to bring our entire province into a state of lockdown. And this has affected many of us. For the people that are extroverted, we feel like we're under house arrest. For the business owners, it's terrifying because the place that you are depending on and you've invested so much time and effort in is now having to be closed. And you're having to struggle with how to balance that, what to do. For the people who are non-essentials, you're now forced to work from home. And for the people who are on the front lines, for the people that are in healthcare, they are hoping that this lockdown is something that's going to bring solutions and help because their life is becoming more and more challenging. Well, I think the one common denominator, the one common thing for all of us in this year so far is that we're all facing challenges. But I don't think that has to ruin our new year and take away all of our hope. In fact, Winston Churchill says, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, whereas an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. I think this is true. If we're willing to be optimistic, people of faith and hope, then I believe 2021 will be a great year, a year of great opportunity, if we're willing to look past just the challenges in front of us. Now, this concept of optimistic living is not a modern, new spiritual teaching. It's not something that's just coming around where people are able to see, you know, hey, if I bring my mind over matter, then I can still be happy. This is a concept that is found all throughout the Bible. But today I wanted to focus on one particular passage, a passage that I think really brings greater understanding to this point. We're going to be looking at Luke 10, 25 to 37. Jesus is having another conversation with a religious teacher, but this one is very different from the one that we looked at last week in Mark 12. It starts off, One day, an expert in the religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking this question, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told them, do this and you will live. Well, the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story, one you've probably heard before. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him up, and then they left him for dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. When he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. Then a temple assistant, or Levite, walked over, looked at him and saw him lying there, and he also passed on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine, bandaging them. He put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs any higher than this, I will pay it the next time I'm here. Now, which one of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus says, yes, now go and do the same. Now, this is a powerful story. It's one of Jesus' most famous teachings. Even non-Christians know about the Good Samaritan. We even have a law called the Good Samaritan Rule. Now, many people may have 
heard of the story, but I don't believe all people understand what's truly being taught in this passage. Now, to help us understand this truth, I think that we need to ask for God's help. So let's say a word of prayer and ask for him to bring wisdom and revelation to us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the wonderful help that it is to us, that it helps us realize who you are, show us what your heart is like, and how we can be like you. But we pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would help us as we look at the story of the Good Samaritan. Help us to understand how each challenge or disruption can be a divine opportunity. And help us to understand how we can recognize these times and respond well, just like Jesus would. We ask this in his name. Amen. So let's examine these verses. But let's look for opportunity and challenges and see how they come into this story. The first interaction I want to look at is between that other religious teacher and Jesus. Now, this religious teacher was there for a very different reason. Unlike, again, the first one we read about in Mark 12 last week. This teacher literally was there to test Jesus. He was hoping to prove him wrong, to get him to say something where he would be able to stumble over his words or would say something that would be heretical and he could say, haha, you have no authority to teach. You clearly don't know what you're talking about. He's trying to stump Jesus. But instead of Jesus being offended by this, getting angry and frustrated, he responds in a very different way to this direct challenge to the challenge that's all about Jesus claiming to be the Son of God and this man striving to prove him wrong. Now, Jesus sees this as an opportunity to help this man who's clearly coming against him as an adversary, as an enemy. He's wanting to help this man and all the people that have gathered around to hear. And so Jesus uses this as an opportunity to teach and bring greater revelation of God's truth to them. And so that is one of the things that I think is incredible. Jesus is met with a challenge, but views it as an opportunity. Now, he asked the other teacher, have you read the law of Moses before? What do you take on it? What's your answer to this question you're asking me? Now, clearly this man had already heard Jesus teaching his new Jesus creed. And again, for those people who don't have experience with creeds, it is a basic statement of beliefs or our faith. And so Jesus' creed, we found out before, was that exact answer. Loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Jesus had added, loving your neighbor as yourself. And that's exactly how he answered. Now Jesus confirms his answer and says that is perfect, but then he makes it personal. Do this and you will live. Even though the man had opened up with a very hypothetical question, what must someone do to inherit eternal life? Jesus brought it back to a personal question saying, if you live this way, you will live. Well, that was a challenge back to the man. And he wanted to justify his actions or lack of actions because I don't think this man was really loving God and his neighbors like he should have. But he really brings us to the heart the area where he was struggling the most. He says, well, okay, who is my neighbor? He wanted to justify his lack of actions. So he asked, who am I supposed to be loving? Who is officially my neighbor? Here's where Jesus brings us to the story of the Good Samaritan, where a traveling Jewish man is attacked, robbed and beaten to death, nearly. He's like the edge on the brink of dying. Now, as he's lying by the side of the road, Two potential helpers pass by, a priest and a Levite, or a helper within the temple. Now, within the Jewish culture, these would be two of the most religious and good people. These are the ones that you would expect to rise up and be a hero, to be more godly and Christ-like. But this ended up becoming too much of a challenge for them because they only saw the problem that this man posed. Yes, he was lying on the ground in need of help desperately, but when they looked at them, the question that came to their mind was, how am I supposed to even be close to this man when he is possibly dead or nearly about to die? Because to do that, I would not be able to obey the law that was given by God where I need to stay away from anything that is dead. If I am close to it or touch it in any way, 
I may be unclean. Now, the law in Numbers 19, 11, 13 says that every single one of God's people, all the Israelites, were supposed to avoid touching any dead person, but especially someone who had been killed by violence and by the sword. If they were to touch someone, they would be unclean for seven days. Now, again, for us, that doesn't really mean that much, but to a priest and a Levite, that would have been the worst offense in the world. Because to be unclean, it meant they wouldn't be able to go to the temple anymore. Because the minute they would walk into God's temple, they would desecrate the whole place. And they would be literally kicked out of their place of work. They would lose their job. And they would be kicked out of their community. The entire Israelite community would push them out. And they would be no longer allowed to be around the people they loved. Their family, their friends, and all of those people who could also be unclean. So it would take a seven day, a whole week time, to get themselves ceremonially cleansed. So in their mind, they are saying, this is too great of a challenge. I see this man who's dying not as an opportunity to show divine love and care, but as a chance for me to not get unclean and defiled. So I'm going to move all the way to the other side of the road, the far side of the road, and walk as far away from him as I possibly can so that there is no chance of me getting any type of uncleanliness from this person. This was their way of dealing with the situation. When they are presented this opportunity, they only saw the challenge. Now, this is where Jesus introduces a very different person, a very unlikely hero, a Samaritan man. Now, all the people that would have been gathered there listening to this on that time and during that day, they would have instantly associated that Samaritan as being the villain or the bad guy. Why? Because the Jewish people and the Samaritans hated each other. They hated each other. Like they were constantly at war with one another. They were convinced, the, the Jews were convinced the Samaritans had sold them out. They had betrayed their faith. They were not worthy of being even considered to be part of their people. So there was bad blood there. And the two people that were most likely the religious and good people, the priest and the Levite, had already failed. They had already fallen short and done according to the law what was right, but not what Jesus was trying to establish. Then he says, okay, this is what the Samaritan person did. He saw the man in need and saw it as an opportunity to be compassionate and to show love and care. Did he have any reason to act that way? No, if any of those people, he had the most reason to be quickly running from that person. Because think about it, if you're a Samaritan in Jewish territory, and there is a man who is beaten and robbed and nearly dead, and people who are witnesses see you with him, who is the first person they're gonna blame? Who is the person they're gonna associate with that crime with? The Samaritan. Because they would say, how could a Jew beat up another Jew? It had to be a Samaritan because they were the evil people. So he was literally in a place where he could potentially be accused of a crime he never committed and he could face harsh punishment. But he chose. Instead of traveling to as far away from he can, going to the far side of the road and running through that passway as fast as he could, he chose to do something different something very dangerous and sacrificial. He took his own goods, his own ability, and he tended to the wounds of the Jewish guy. He took care of him. He showed him love and compassion. And he didn't just deal with the immediate, the immediate need. He didn't just take care of his wounds and say, okay, now that you're not going to die, I'm going to walk away and leave you and make sure that no matter what, no one would misconstrue what happened and confuse it as me attacking you. They would only see me caring for you. No, then he takes a body that is beaten and nearly dead, throws it over top of his donkey and starts to transport this person to an inn to be cared for. Again, passing by many potential witnesses who could look at that and assume the worst. This man has robbed and beaten someone and now he's taking the body away. But he takes on that opportunity, even though it comes with challenges, because he wants to be 
loving and compassionate. Then he takes the man to the inn. He continues to care for his wounds, then pays the innkeeper to continue to care for this man so that no matter what, he would have every opportunity to be able to heal, to recover, and be brought back to full and complete health. And he did it all out of his own pocket. He sacrificed his safety. He sacrificed his material, his goods. He gave up his time, his plans, and then gave up his own money at the end to care for this person sacrificially. So when Jesus asked the question, who do you think was the real neighbor? I think it was pretty easy for the religious teacher of the law, even though he didn't like the answer, it was pretty easy for him to say, the one who showed him mercy. Because it was so obvious. Now, this is where we're able to learn something very important. Not just the fact that we're called to love our neighbor because that is the greatest commandment, but we're also called to see the ultimate expression of love comes from how we view circumstances. We can become so caught up with only perceiving the challenges, just like in this story, how can I remain pure? How can I follow the law? How can I keep my own safety? Because at any moment, if I do this, it could come back to be affecting my life and I could be punished because of this. It could cost me too much. If we're only looking at the challenges, we miss out on the opportunities. Now, I believe this is where we can be just like the Good Samaritan. Yes, 2021 has already been a year of great challenge. But if we're willing to change our perspective, it can also be a year of great opportunity. With so many people that are being tested right now, facing incredible hardships and clearly in need, we have amazing opportunities every single day to make an impact on the people around us that we love, on our community, on the entire world, if we're willing to love and care for our neighbors. So how are you gonna view these potential circumstances? How are you gonna view every opportunity that God brings to you? Are you gonna be like that pessimistic person, like the priest and the Levite, and you're only gonna see the challenge? Or are we gonna be like Jesus and this Good Samaritan, and we view it as divine opportunities to make a difference and to show love, even when it comes at a cost? I want to say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, please help us to be open to your leading. We pray, Holy Spirit, that we would have a heart that's tender so every opportunity that does come our way, we would have the capacity to see with your eyes and feel with your heart that we can be moved by compassion as well, just like the great Samaritan. Give us the ability to want to love like you so that we can make an impact and do your kingdom work Help us to love our neighbors and the people you're placing into our lives as we would want to be loved and cared for. We pray, God, that we would be able to see divine opportunities when they come and respond in the right way, just like Jesus would, so that we can make an impact and transform lives and help people that are in need. And we ask and we pray for your help with this because by ourselves, it's impossible. We may not be able to see things and recognize them fast enough. We may not be able to have the heart and the courage to step out because we're not moved by that love. But if you are the one who's motivating us, God, we can be equipped and empowered to do it and we can accomplish incredible things. So help us to be like you and to love. Love when there is so much opportunity to do so. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wanted to bring up uh, my benediction for each of the people that are, that are joining us and that are watching today. And the benediction is taken from 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13. It takes this, this concept of challenge and opportunity, but it brings it to a whole nother level. And I really enjoy how he portrays this. Listen to what Peter says. Friends, let's not be surprised at the challenges we're going through, as if something strange is happening to us. But 
Let us view it as an opportunity for us to partner with Jesus in his suffering and to be able to rejoice and have joy when we see God's glory revealed to all the world. I pray that that would be something that becomes a reality for you, that we would be able to see that we have so many opportunities when they come up, that we can be able to partner with Christ in his suffering and his great work, his kingdom work, so that we may be able to see God's glory revealed all around the world in our communities, in our homes, and with our families. And we ask that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I pray that your new year that you're facing would not just be a year of challenge, but a year of opportunity. Have a great day. Take care.